my name is Ellen Myrick. I'm with Publisher Spotlight, and welcome to our Social Emotional Learning Roundup for this year's NACI. We're going to start with Every Little Kindness. This is a book from Chronicle Books. It's a wordless picture book, which of course I love. And it all starts as a girl is searching for her lost dog. And one small act of kindness that she does has these wonderful ripple effects. And before you know it, just it keeps paying it forward. It's just beautiful. There's a splash of color on each page. It kind of lets you know where the kindness is happening at that moment. There you go, good example of that. Isn't the art just beautiful in this book? And by the end, of course, the dog is restored. So this is Every Little Kindness by Marta Bartoli, and that is from Chronicle Books. Next up, let's look at Lantana and what they have to offer. My Mindful A to Zen. This is haiku, alphabetical, and a mindfulness haiku. So how wonderful is that? Um, writing haiku is such a wonderful exercise for kids. But here you can see O is for Om. Lift your spirit with the sound of the universe. Sacred vibration. So many beautiful things and also a great writing prompt. So if you want to encourage creativity. Next up, I am a peaceful goldfish. So are you? I like to try to be one. This is from Greystone Kids. And this is a book about when our feelings get really big, how to take a deep breath and use our imaginations to be something, to, to think through it and work through those big, big feelings. Illustrations are very fun and very accessible. This really can be used as a guided meditation book for very young children. And I just think it's wonderful. So this is, I am a peaceful goldfish. <sighs> And so while we're being mindful and taking a moment, this is another book that can be used as a guide, guided meditation for young children, maybe slightly older children. So this is part of the Cat and the Cat and the Hats learning series. And some other ones in the same series are Inside Your Inside Your Outside and Oh the Things You Can Do That Are Good For You. So check these out. And this one is specifically about mindfulness. So you can actually do some yoga while you're doing this. But very fun. Wonderful rhyming text that I think Dr. Seuss would not have any issues with. So this is The Cat on the Mat from Random House. Next up from Tilbury House, another house, we have Most Days. Now you may remember Most People, which came out from Tilbury House a few years ago, which was basically most people just want to be nice to each other. In this case, most days are pretty much like other days, but there's always something to discover fresh and new in each day. Just a beautiful story about looking around you and being aware of what's happening and just appreciating all the small things that happen. So there you go. And I love the thing, the thing I really love about these books is that they normalize such a wide variety of experiences. And they just really have a wonderful diverse cast. Tilbury House knows what they're doing. Next up, another book about the choices we make every day. This is Choices by Child's Play. And I think this author's name is pronounced Rizaboos. It's fun to say, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. And this is a book about just looking around and being aware of all the little choices and big choices we make each day and how those can affect everything we do. So I think the illustrations are really fun and vibrant and just, again, very, very accessible for small children and normalizes a variety of experiences and people that we may see in our everyday lives. Really, really fun. This is from Child's Play. Next up, El Kukui is scared too. So Kukui is the monster that lives in the, uh, in the cactus. So there you go. This is a story about moving and how sometimes moving to a new place and, and having to make new friends, that's, that's kind of a scary proposition. But El Kukui gives permission for this child to uh, experience those feelings and work through them. It's a beautiful story. And the thing I love about this one, let me show you, it's from Abrams. Um, I just love the anthropomorphization of, of the, uh, the, pirate, the cactus monster. It's just, he's got all the big feelings there. So you can see this. Oh, I want this to be a poster. Anyway, this is Okukui is Scared Too. And it also is a really good read aloud. Next up, another story about moving. This one's a little bit... Um, it's, it's almost wordless, and it's from an author who is based in Colombia. This is from mine edition. And the, um, the family is leaving Colombia because it's dangerous. And they're crossing the river, and, they, and the family has their, their dog, and another family is crossing, and they have their pet bird. And 
and it looks like it's going to be okay. Let me get you to that picture. Here we go. And there's there's the Antonio is the dog. Antonio is the dog, and everyone's getting ready to cross. Here we go. Everyone's preparing to cross. There you go. And they get to the other side, and suddenly Antonio goes exploring. And they can't find Antonia anywhere. And so the family then has to figure out what are they going to do. And um, they can't find him, but they have to go. And we'll see the child over here at the very at the very bottom there. He's thinking about the situation. So you know what he does? He lets his bird free. So the bird can keep the dog company. And that is Antonia, A Journey to a New Home from my edition. Next up, I love this series um, from Michael Ian Black and from Debbie Ohi. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm bored, I'm worried. There's several in this series. And they just seem so authentic to a child's experiences of these different emotions. Um, it's hard to learn to say I'm sorry. No one likes to do it. It's just one of those things you just, when you have to do it, it's like, oh, really? Oh, drag it out of me. But here we go. And it just presents a wonderful story about how, why the, the potato needs to say I'm sorry to the flamingo. And very accessible and funny. And again, a very good read aloud. Lots of energy, very relatable. You know, there you go. You know those feelings. We all have potatoes with mustaches, right? Sure. Another book about feelings is Jenny May is Sad. What I really love about this one is the story of a friendship. So Jenny May is sad. And her friend knows that. And she also knows that sometimes her friend is covering it up. Um, that she may smile on the outside, but still be sad on the inside. And there are some days when she can't do that as well. And feelings may come out. And she just knows that she needs to be a good listener. And maybe find something fun to do for the two of them. And just, uh, it's a wonderful story about how to be a good friend. And also how to recognize when somebody may be sad, even though they may not be showing it all the time. Beautiful, beautiful, heartfelt story. And this is from Little Brown Books for Young Readers. And I should have said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't say I'm sorry is from Simon and Schuster. Next up, A Shelter for Sadness. This may be one of my very favorite illustrated books of all time. I just think these illustrations are incredible. Um, this is from Peachtree. And this is about when you're sad, recognizing that and building a place for it in your life and learning how to live with it. And I think that's a wonderful uh, way to talk about those feelings and how to deal with them. It's just um, really evocative and gives kids some tools to talk about mental health issues, too. So anytime you can give kids ways to talk about that, isn't the light in that just amazing? Um, wonderful, heartfelt again. We are talking about social-emotional learning, so we're going to have all those heartfelt books. A Shelter for Sadness from Peachtree. I feel anxious. This is the newest one from DJ Corchin, and there's he has a whole series of books, I Feel series from Source Books. And what they do is they, they give kids different ways of understanding those emotions. And then in the back, which I think is just as important as what's in the in the front, there are all these great activities and ideas for parents and caregivers and teachers on how to talk about these emotions and activities they can do with them. So this is the I Feel series from Sourcebooks. And lastly, we have Talking is Not My Thing. This is from Erdman's, and this is a book about a neurodiverse child. This is a, a nonverbal uh, autistic girl and how she doesn't talk and how her family relates to her and, and how she relates to them. I think it's, um, it's, again, very, very simple, accessible, and I just opened it really wide there for the first time, evidently. It's very accessible, and the relationship between the, the little girl and her brother is, is lovely. And, um, yeah, it just teaches kids how to be empathetic to people who may not communicate the same way they do and how to be alert for those signs of how to communicate and when somebody's trying to send them a message. So this is Talking Is Not My Thing, and this is Publisher Spotlight at NACI. Thanks so much for joining us at Social Emotional Learning Time. We have a board, a Pinterest board of these and even more books on social emotional topics, as well as several other theme book talks. So I hope you will tune in for those as well. Thanks so much and have a great, great Macy.